Hey everybody, this is Jason over at the Children's Museum of Houston here to give you another great video about A-STEAM. This time we're going to be talking about the wonderful world of physics. Now I know that physics is one of those words you hear and you get a little scared like, oh no, physics is hard. Physics is hard for kids to understand. Physics has a lot of math. Physics has a lot of laws and theories and there's lots of big thick books that talk about physics. But we're going to make physics fun for the kids. And we're also going to give you just a very few concepts for the kids to understand so that while they're making a project, they're going to have the wonderful physics behind that project so they understand what's going on within their project. Now you probably heard me say the word making a moment ago. That's because that's what the kids are going to do. They're going to make things. Now making is this great new way of learning. Instead of teaching kids step-by-step step how to do something, you basically give them a project and say, hey, here's some materials, here's some supplies, here's some stuff, make me a marble maze, make me a parachute, make me a boat, make me a trebuchet, make me a catapult, make me whatever it is that you want them to make, but you don't tell them how to do it. Now, sometimes that seems a little bit rough, there's no instructions. What are my kids going to do? Don't worry about it. They'll figure it out. And that's the whole idea. It's okay for your students to make a mistake now and again. Mistakes are fine. That's how you learn. You make a mistake. It doesn't do what you want it to do. You start over or you do a new iteration or you add something or you ask a friend, hey, hey this isn't working out for me. What can I do? And you get this collaborative learning and kids are helping each other out and they're trying to outdo one another on their projects to make the better thing. So one of the things your kids are going to make is a marble maze. And here's an example of a marble maze. And here's the marble. And basically what you would do is you'd put the marble in and you'd try to run it through the maze. Pretty simple. Now this could be considered a science project. It can be considered an art project. When you mix science and art together, that's when you have these ideas of making. So the marble maze materials are varied. We have cards like this. We have straws like that. We have craft sticks, big and small. We have tape and glue. We have chipboard. We have boxes. We have all the stuff they need to make it, plus whatever you have. This is one of those great things that if you have stuff in your closets that you want to get rid of, like your supply rooms and whatnot, throw it on the table. Say, hey, here's the stuff. You can do what you need to do to make this. And the kids will do what they can do. Now, there's really lots of different ways you can go with this. You can give each kid their own box and they each can make their own maze. You can also put the kids in the groups, give them multiple boxes and make larger mazes. You can also do a whole group project with every kid in the class and make a huge maze. It's really easy to cut the sides of these boxes out or to use chipboard instead of the boxes or do whatever you want to do. We kind of want to recommend though that you let every kid do it so they can take something home with them. But if you have extra supplies at the end of the day, use them. We don't need any of this stuff back. Use it all up, okay? We'll get more from the next groups, that's fine. We give you this stuff for your kids to use. You don't have to bring any of this stuff back, except for things like the glue and the scissors and the tape. That stuff we can use, and the marbles. We can have the marbles back, that would be great. But everything else is for the kids to use. Now, this is where it becomes a little bit where you need to bring the science into it. Before they start making a marble maze, you want to make sure they understand the physics behind what's going on. And they're really simple on this marble maze. Really, really simple. There's really just five concepts you need to talk about. And they're tied together. So it really becomes only two concepts. One is the concept of potential energy versus kinetic energy. Now, what do you think potential energy might be? Well, it's the stored energy of something. So right now I have a marble in my hand it's not moving, it's not doing really anything, okay? I can set the marble on the table and it's still not really doing anything. But I can flick the marble and it starts to move, all right? Actually, I've demonstrated a couple of concepts right there. First of all, I demonstrated that there is potential energy within that marble. If I flick the marble, it's kinetic energy. 
Kinetic energy is moving energy, some sort of movement happening. Now, you can go really simple with kinetic energy and drop the marble, and right there, gravity takes over, but it's still moving through the air, it's moving through space. But also, when I flick the marble, we talk about the other physics concepts you want the kids to understand, and that's Newton's laws of motion. Now, Sir Isaac Newton was one of those great, great scientists. He's up there with Einstein, Marie Curie, Jonas Salk, who gave us you know, the vaccine for polio, just these great scientists who really think beyond the box and do things to enlighten us further about our world and about everything around us. What's really interesting about Newton is that in order to actually prove his theories of physics, he created math, which we know now as calculus. So he actually created this very complex, not alone, other people were working on it with him in other parts of the world, I might add, but he helped create this math that is very, very, very complex to help prove these very, very complex physics ideas. Now, we're not gonna give you a complex idea of physics. He had some simple ones, too. One of the simplest ideas he came up with were the three laws of motion. So let's go one by one to these laws. The first law is one that most kids know. They know it by either the law or by its nickname. Let's do the law first. So basically what it states is this. Anything in motion will remain in motion until acted upon by an unbalanced force. And conversely, anything at rest will remain at rest until acted upon by an unbalanced force. So here on the earth, that's pretty easy to understand. You know, I put the marble on the table, it's at rest. I flick the marble with my finger, it's in motion. Friction caused it to stop and actually start to move backwards a little bit too. This is also known as inertia. All right, and inertia is something that will be continuous if there are no unbalanced forces. So think about something like the Voyager spacecraft. The Voyager spacecraft was launched in the 1970s, and it's flying through space right now. It's out of our solar system. It's going to keep moving until acted upon by an unbalanced force. Now, who knows what those unbalanced forces might be? It might hit an asteroid someday. Not only will it stop moving, it'll stop working. It might start orbiting a planet someday, and then even though it got knocked out of its original motion, then it'll continue moving in that motion until acted upon by another unbalanced force. So when you're in space, you can kind of more understand this idea of inertia and this idea that it's not just another force, it's an unbalanced force, it's something knocking it out of its original motion. So there you go, first law, inertia, pretty simple to understand. The second law is a little bit more difficult to understand because it's a math equation. Luckily, though, it's an easy one. The second law of motion really simply states F, which is force, equals M, which is mass, times A, which is acceleration. What's that all mean? Well, you might have heard about mass. Your mass is the amount of space within your matter, the compactness of your matter. Okay, and your matter is how much space you take up. So no matter what, you're here on the planet Earth, you're on the moon, you're on Jupiter, you're way out on Pluto, your mass remains the same. Your mass will never change. Unless you change your amount of space you hold up. So if you get taller, you get a little heavier, you get a little lighter in the terms of weight, then your mass might change incrementally. But if you weigh 100 pounds here on the Earth, you're gonna weigh less on the moon. You're gonna weigh one sixth of that, okay? But your mass will remain the same. And mass is always done in the metric system. It's always done in grams, okay? So in order to make your mass accelerate, it has to equal the amount of force acted upon it. So basically, your mass, let's say, is two. Your acceleration is two, that's four. The amount of force needed to make that happen will also be four, okay? So they have to equal out. Now, that's all well and good, but it's a little difficult for kids this age to sort of understand because what they're not used to is terms like mass, are terms like acceleration, are terms like force. They know force because they know the force of gravity, they know the force of motion, but to put them all together is a little bit difficult to understand. They still need to know it, but it, 
that really applies the amount least to these projects. The next one, though, applies heavily. And that is, for every action, there is an opposite and equal reaction. So the third law, for every action, there's an opposite and equal reaction. This is really easy to demonstrate with marbles. So check this out. I'm gonna line up some marbles. And I'm gonna line them up all about the same size. Now, I'm gonna take this one marble, and if I start to push it towards the other marble, you're gonna see how the third law is actually occurring right before your eyes. So you flick it, and you notice that the equal and opposite reaction was when I hit them from the back, the front ones moved, because as I hit it, the force went forward and then backwards. And because the table was a little curvy, they kind of moved in all these weird directions, but the back two didn't move at all because they took the brunt of the force from the marble I flicked, and they took the brunt of the force from the marbles reacting backwards towards the other way. So right there, equal and opposite reaction. The other really good one is a rocket firing off into space. When those rockets fire down onto the Earth, the Earth is literally pushing back up on it, causing the rocket to um, get around that force and blast off, okay? But the Earth is pushing back, okay? So those five concepts are really all you need to know. Now you also need to know a little bit about making on this. It's going to be your tendency to actually help the kids, tell them what to do, give them advice, which is all well and good, but you don't want to do that. You've got to go to the opposite of your tendency on this. When a kid asks you for help, you need to question them back saying, what would you do? Kind of these leading questions. Well, how could you fix that? What other supplies could you use? What other materials could you use? To achieve your goal, what do you think you can do to combine materials? Questions like that. Don't tell them what to do. If you tell them what to do, then all these marble mazes will look exactly the same. So it's a good idea for you to build one beforehand, but maybe not even show it to them until after they built theirs. So you can say like, oh wow, yours is really cool. Oh, yours is really cool. Oh, yours is really cool. This is what I did. And then you can see, they can see that even you had a different concept than they did. So that's what's really, really important about this is that making is trial and error. Making is having to deal with a mistake might happen or there's a better way of doing it or there's a different way of doing it. And also when it comes to making, encourage every style. Some kids are gonna use the straws only. Some kids are gonna use the craft sticks only. Some kids are gonna use the cards only. Some kids are gonna use combos of everything. Some kids are gonna make them high. Some kids are gonna make them flat. That's all good. There is nothing ever wrong with any design that any kid decides to make. The only thing that would cause this activity to not go right is if the kids do, do it on their own. They need to do it on their own. So, like I said, everyone's tendency when a kid asks for help is to help them. On this one, you want to lead them towards helping themselves. All right, so there we go. Marble mazes. I hope you guys have fun making them, and we'll get back to you with some more making videos soon after this. Thanks, everybody. Bye.